everyone, welcome back to Art on the Cart, and this episode is going to be how to draw a cat walking from a sideway perspective. For this drawing, I'm going to be using regular art paper. I'm going to use a couple of different pencils. One here is a lighter lead, which is a 2B, which I'll use for my initial drawing. I also have a mechanical pencil with just some regular 2B lead in that as well. To start this drawing off, we're going to just block in our basic shapes. So first I'm going to sketch in my cat head right there. I'm just going to symbolize it by a circle. I'll change that shape a little bit later. And then I'm going to find my backbone. And it's going to start right at the base of the skull and run all the way back down along the back of the cat. It really stays pretty flat. It might kind of have a, a little bit of an upward arch to it, just a little bit. And again, depending on the breed of cat you're drawing, whether it's a short hair or a long hair, how old it is, if it's a wild cat or a domestic cat, all these proportions and things can vary and change. So this is just an average cat. Cats have this uncanny way of being able to stretch when they need to and condense when they need to. I don't know, they have like an accordion inside. I don't know. What I'm gonna do is to help me out with this is with a circle that's roughly maybe one and a half sizes bigger than the size of the head, I'm gonna draw a circle here. I'm gonna skip a spot here that's about maybe the size of the cat's head. And then I'm gonna put in another circle that's roughly the same size as the first circle. So two and probably two and a half circles um, wide. But really, you're gonna I have just eyeball it to see what looks right for you and for your cat. Depending on what breed of cat you had, that will change. It's really good to use reference photos, and you can kind of measure that out. But this shape here is going to kind of turn into maybe a long rectangle. This is gonna be really flat across here unless you have a tubby cat. Then it may droop down a little bit. But there's the main basic shape for the cat's body. Now I'm gonna to go to putting the legs, and again, I put them in really simply, just using circles and lines to represent joints and bone. So I'm gonna start up here where the cat's shoulder is. I'm gonna bring this leg part back here to the back elbow, and then down to the forearm to the paw. And you'll notice I put circles in anywhere I, I know that there's a bend. That means I can manipulate that. I could bring this paw up here, or I could bring this out over here, or I could bend this paw around. Anywhere it can bend, I put that circle. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, but I'm gonna have this paw reaching forward. So here's the shoulder where it comes out, reaching out to the elbow, and it's gonna reach out towards the front step. So you see how same distance of lines, but I manipulated where these are bending to. So I changed the direction of my feet. Once you get used to doing this, then you can put your cat in any position you want. As you learn to bend its legs, um, you don't need an exact model or a photo to do it. You can do it in your head. So the back here, up here is where the hip bone is. It comes down. I'm going to have it come back pretty far. It's a, since this paws out this far, I'm going to put this one back. Here's the back of the leg going down for the back paw. And then I'm gonna bring this one up, starting up the hip here, bring this one up to the knee, back to the bend in the heel. Now you'll see that I have two circles here where I only have one here. This is stretched so far that there's actually two bending joints right here, really close to one another. Um, but because it's so straight, I really don't see it, that that cat's leg kind of goes bonk, bonk, like so. After you get really good at that, you won't have to draw every single circle to where things bend. You'll just automatically kind of know where it goes, and, and you can fix that. Now, this leg here is going to be closest to us, so now I'm going to start sketching in, and this is going to go all the way up to the head. I'm going to begin fleshing this out. So at the cat's top of the cat's front leg is a little thicker, and then it gets, gets leaner as it goes down towards the paw. And this leg, because it's stretching out, the skin's going to be pulled really tight towards this end. A little bit looser over here, coming back into here. Again, we're drawing really lightly, so it's easy to erase. If we make any mistakes or need to make a correction, this is the time to really start looking at that as you begin to build these shapes and going, mm, do I need to make that longer? Do I need to make that shorter? Does that look right? Um, this is where you want to make those changes. So this leg here is going to be closer to me. Uh, because the cat's skin is so flexible, you're not gonna see this fold line come down here. It really just kind of just stretches out. Think of it as a really big, stretchy sweater. 
just kind of folds in around the cat. And here's the back leg. And you'll see when I'm drawing this, I'm not just making one straight line. You'll see I'm moving my pencil back and forth a lot. You're not focusing on the precision of a single line. You're looking at the precision of your shape. So training yourself to make a lot of lines over the same. Not to say that you should draw your line like that, don't do that. But see I'm making, going back over that line several times really, really lightly so that I can get that, just that right line that I need. Because I want that really good connection to the ground, when I get to the bottom of the paw, I'm gonna really flatten it out. It's gonna make it look a little bit like the pressure of the weight of the cat is pushing down on its paws, where these paws that aren't having that pressure are really rounded. All right, so next thing is the cat's tail, and the cat tail tells you, cat tail, <laughs> So the cat's tail tells you a lot about the emotion of the cat. If the cat's tail was slunk down, it would be more of a sneaking cat, or maybe it would be um, upset or sick or um, scared. It would have its tail kind of down. Um, but I'm gonna put my cat's tail up kind of at a little quirk. That means it's comfortable where it's at. It's um, curious, it's happy. Having it up tail, there we go, makes our happy cat. So we have a good um, shape design for our cat's body. So now let's focus on the cat head. So I look at my cat head, I'm gonna start shaping this out a little bit. Really looking at my reference photos, um, other drawings I've done of cats. And so I'm not gonna have it come up as high as that circle is. As the neck comes up from the shoulders, when it gets to the bottom of the cat head, I'm gonna have it kind of flatten out underneath the cat jaw. Here's the skull of the cat coming down over the top of the skull and over the eye socket to the bridge of the nose. Just like so. And I'm going to put in my ears. I put my second ear, and you'll notice that when I put my second ear, I'm not drawing it as big. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, and that's going to make it go back a little bit in distance so that it will look like this ear is closer to us than that ear. If you make one just a little bit smaller, you don't want a big difference, but just a little bit. And then I want to work on the eye. I'm just going to kind of place it in by a circle. I'm going to go right up the bridge of the nose. That little dip going just a little bit, and that's where I'm going to put in my, put in my circle. Now that we completed the focus of figuring out where the form is, now I can change my focus to the precision of my line. So I'll go back in with an eraser, erase the lines I don't need, and then come back in with maybe a little bit of a darker pencil or a more precision pencil to add in my final lines. As you can see, I have erased the lines I don't need, which is pretty much a lot of them. And I know what some of you might be thinking is, why would you draw all those lines if you're just going to erase them again? The first time through is looking at the form, not the line. I erased very gently so that I can still see the form, but the lines are really diminished. This will leave room for me to get my precision lines in there. Because I want to make this a realistic cat drawing, I don't want to focus on line. Anything you outline is going to make it look cartoony or illustrated. If you want to draw something a little bit more realistic, you're going to want to focus more on form, shape, value, shadow, texture, things like that. Um, so really look at your, at your reference photos. So I'm going to use a, a mechanical pencil here. I have a little mermaid one. And I'm going to go through and begin creating really small lines that will imitate and indicate fur.
another trick to try is to add just a little bit of shading marks with your pencil. Then go back with a blending stick. This blending stick is just made with a tightly rolled piece of paper and I bought it at my local arts and craft store. So I'm first going to show you how I'm doing this in normal time so you can see exactly how long this takes. Now this tail is going to have a black tip to this tail. So instead of just sitting and coloring the whole thing black, the reason I'm coloring it in using these little lines is because it's going to add that texture in there. So it's going to look not flat, it's going to have a little bit of volume to it as it goes. So you can see this takes a little bit of time. So I'll speed this up into time lapse so you don't have to sit here and watch me make line after line after line. Um, you can watch me do it really fast. Whee! If you guys have watched my How to Draw Dalmatian Dog video, you'll know that one of the things I said I try to do was when I started doing detail work, I start from the opposite side of my dominant hand. Since I'm left-handed, I start over on the right side of my paper and work this way. That way I'm not smudging up my paper. Sometimes I forget. So what do you do when you've done all your work on the dominant side and you have to go over and do the work on the non-dominant side without smudging? Um, one is to become immediately ambidextrous and use your other hand, which I'm not. And two is to get a paper for a shield. So what you want to do is just take a clean piece of paper, put it over the part that you want to protect, and then lay your hand on top. Try not to move the paper around. You can take your other hand and set it on top. That way you can move this hand around and it's not really going to smudge this underneath. This, is this paper protects that. So you can have a little smudge guard. So there is a little trick for protecting your drawings as you go. Well, I think I have it just about where I want it, so there we go. I hope you found this video enjoyable. I know it was a little bit longer than some of my other videos, but I really wanted to give you guys a nice detailed video on one, drawing a cat, and two, on some tips and tricks on shading and stuff like that. So thanks guys for sticking it out with me. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. If you end up drawing a cat of your very own, I would love to see it. Please post those on my Facebook page or Instagram so I can take a peek at them. And you never know, they might end up in one of my showcase videos so I love doing those. I'm going to be doing another one of those pretty soon because I'm getting a lot of pictures from you guys. I'm so excited. Thanks guys for drawing with me and until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.